The new divide is whether you're centralized, patriarchal, top-down, I see you nodding, that's the old way with the old elite energies, the old business models, or whether you think distributed, collaborative, open source, open commons. My name is Jeremy Rifkin. I'm the president of the Foundation on Economic Trends in Washington, D.C. I'm the author of the new book, The Empathic Civilization. Hello, Jeremy Rifkin. You are the author of uh, Empathic Civilization. Um, when we read what you are writing, it seems that uh, the competition in, in the economy, that's something which is over. Is this what human beings are really all about? Are we competitive, predatory, utilitarian, materialistic, selfish, autonomous, rational, and pleasure-seeking. Mm -hmm. That's the idea of human nature we've embedded in our parenting styles, our educational institutions, our governance and business models. If that is who we are, we're likely doomed. Uh, what we're learning now, interesting enough, in the, in the cutting edges of evolutionary biology and neurocognitive science and child development is that's not human nature. And it appears we are softwired not for competition and violence and aggression and materialism, mm -hmm. but for empathy. To actually physically, our neurocircuitry, to experience another's condition as if we were experiencing it ourselves. And the changes in empathy occur when new energy revolutions converge with new communication revolutions. Mm -hmm. When new communication revolutions come about to manage new energy regimes, they actually change our frame of reference. They change the way the brain understands reality, and they change consciousness. I'll give you an example. Every forge or hunter society in history, they forged, they hunted, that was their energy. Mm -hmm. They all had oral language to coordinate it. Every one of them created mythological consciousness. And empathy only extended to blood ties. If you were in the tribe, empathic. The other tribe, not human. Mm -hmm. right. What you are saying now, actually, it's that the iPhone, the new the blogosphere, uh, the fact that uh, photovoltaic panels on roofs, it's not just an anecdote in our uh, time, but it's a new historical step. You That's said what it you well. Are seeing now. Yes, we're on the convergence of a new energy communication mix that could bring us biosphere consciousness mm. and extend empathy to the human family as a diverse family, our fellow creatures as part of that family in one biosphere. We had the internet revolution, as you say, in the last 15 years. This mm -hmm. is distributed information communication technology, meaning billions of people now can take their own iPhones mm -hmm. or Blackberries, send their own video audio text to two billion other people, distributed. This distributed information communication technology revolution is now converging, as you suggest, mm -hmm. with distributed energies, mm -hmm. renewable energies. And when distributed internet technologies as a communication tool organizes distributed energies, the sun, the wind, mm -hmm. the heat under the ground, the garbage, the biomass, the tidal waves, that's a third industrial revolution which is going to change the world and change consciousness and extend empathy. Isn't, isn't it something to do with the fact that uh, scarcity um, makes predatory behavior uh, appear sometimes? And what you are mentioning there is for maybe energy from the sun is very available for anybody? Information is available for anybody? Correct. But what we have now is a, an old civilization that's dying on life support in a new civilization with a new consciousness being born. The old civilization is the second industrial revolution based on fossil fuel energies. They're all sunsetting. The prices are continuing to go up for oil, coal, gas, and uranium. Sure. They'll never come down again. Sure. And all the technologies of the 20th century are based on those energies. And the entire infrastructure civilization is embedded in those energies. And it's on my support. It's, it's obviously in an end game. Mm -hmm. It isn't going to grow again. The new civilization being born is the third industrial revolution. It's a collaborative economy. And it's based on four pillars. One, renewable energies. And the EU has committed itself to 20% mm -hmm. renewable energy by 2020. Mm -hmm. It's a third of the electricity. Pillar two in the infrastructure is in the European Union's committed itself to a long-term plan to convert every building in Europe to a power plant. So you collect your own energy, like you collect your own information on your desktop computer. So you'll have a solar roof on the building, vertical wind, mm -hmm. heat under the ground, garbage converted to energy. That'll start a construction boom across Europe because you have to convert every single building in Europe to be your own little power plant. Pillar three, we're putting in hydrogen to store that energy because the sun isn't always shining here in Brussels and the wind isn't always blowing. So you have to store 
that renewable energy in the form of hydrogen. Then pillar four is the most interesting pillar. That's where the internet revolution in communication combines with the distributed energies. We use the internet technology and we take the power grid, the power lines of Europe, turn them into an intergrid with mm -hmm. internet technology. So when millions and millions and millions of buildings are producing just a little bit of their own renewable energy, storing it in hydrogen or like you store digital and media, sure. then if you don't need some, like, you share it across a grid across Europe. We become to realize that we're as connected in the biosphere as we're connected in the blogosphere. That creates biosphere consciousness. A great question, uh, people just uh, observing all the shift which is occurring now. They say, how do we make money out of that for people? How do we make business? How to, do we make the economy grow uh, after all? If, if we share everything, if we are our own you know, uh, energy producer, information producer, where will the value come from? Well, and we're just now beginning to lay down master plans in major cities and regions. We're just finishing the entire master plan for Rome a 40-year collaborative plan with the mayor of Rome to make it a third industrial revolution city completely post-carbon where everybody creates their own energy and energy cooperatives and shares it across southern Italy. So when we do a master plan we look at the numbers over 40 years and we say perhaps maybe in a given city you take two percent of the money you're going to spend on economic development each year instead of putting it in the old system that's dying mm -hmm. 98% will go in the old system dying because mm -hmm. you got to keep it alive. If you put 2%, which could be a billion a year in a big city, a billion a year, and you put that billion in to lay down these four pillars year after year after year, in 20 years you have an infrastructure mm -hmm. for a third industrial revolution for what we call distributed capitalism. It's actually a hybrid mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. capitalism and socialism yeah, because yeah. everyone has to be an entrepreneur, yeah. but then you set up energy cooperatives to share collaboratively. It's an internet model. Mm -hmm. It's collaborative uh, development of business. Last question. Uh, is it uh, the hand of business schools? I'm going to get in trouble. I'm uh -huh. laughing because I teach at the oldest business school in the yeah, world, no. and <laughs> Wharton's usually rank one or two in the world. I've been there a long time. I was a student there in the 1960s, but I I, I'm a senior lecturer in the, in the executive education program. So I teach the advanced management program. It's a six-week program for CEOs mm. that come back. And we are introducing this in the advanced management program, the, all these new ideas. We're introducing third industrial revolution. We're introducing distributed capitalism. We're introducing the new business models that go with it. We're introducing the shift from geopolitics to biosphere consciousness right now we've begun. It's not at the MBA level, it's not at the undergraduate level, they're still learning, you know, more conventional models. Mm -hmm. But for a younger generation that grew up on the internet, the real shift here politically is not right-left anymore. No one on the internet says, well, I'm in a social space, I'm with Linux, or I'm in Facebook, or I'm doing Google, and therefore I'm a right or left. The new divide is whether you're centralized, patriarchal, top-down, I see you nodding, that's the old way with the old elite energies, the old business models, or whether you think distributed, collaborative, open source, open commons. So what we have is a younger generation, it's not yet in the MBA schools, mm -hmm. and we, ha we have it in the executive ed at Wharton at least, but a younger generation whose whole thinking is distributed, flat, and open source. The third industrial revolution is the model for that because it's distributed energy. And so we say to a younger generation that grew up empowered to create their own information and share it in open spaces. Now you can create your own energy and share it in social commons across entire continents. For the EU, this is the next great project. It's the integration of all 27 states into a distributed energy regime that's post-carbon, that's sustainable, and that takes us from geopolitics to biosphere responsibility. Thank you very much. You're welcome.